Man, that red ghost gets me every time. Oh! Hey, I'm Fireball Tim, and this is my world of cars. We're in an arcade. Why an arcade? Because this is the place to be in the 80s, man. You have Miss Pac-Man. You got Rubik's Cube. Even Cameraman Dan has leg warmers. Stop laughing! Be 80! We even had go-karts! Oh, look at this. Oh, man, who could forget this work of art? The DeLorean. They only made this car for a couple years, but because of the Back to the Future movies and its awesome style, it was an icon in the era. Oh, man, I've always been intrigued by this car. And for those of you that feel the same way I do, you'll be happy to know that DeLorean Motor Company is back alive and well, and they're making new cars. Yeah. So when we heard the DeLorean was up and running in Texas, we just had to check it out for ourselves. So we packed up and headed out to Houston to visit the new DMC factory. That's the DeLorean Motor Company. And we met up with James Espy, who was nice enough to show us around. Oh, check this out. This is great. James, how are you, man? Hi. Good to see you. Nice seeing you. This is awesome. Thanks. You want to take a look around? Let's do it. Man. All right. So DeLorean was in Ireland. Right. I thought it was extinct. I'm sure a lot of people thought it was extinct. Most people do, yeah. 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 So, and then it ends up in Houston, Texas. How, yeah. how the heck that happen? Well, when John DeLorean's company closed in late 82, everything that was left in the factory, all the parts that had yet to be made into cars, got boxed up, put in containers, and they were shipped to a warehouse up in Ohio. Uh, we acquired all of that inventory in about 97 or so and had everything moved down here. So basically what's in here is everything that came out of the factory parts wise. So what we're doing now is we're creating newly assembled cars where we'll start with one of the stainless steel chassis, we'll start with one of the new fiberglass underbodies, and we'll use these parts and the modern stuff, and we will create a newly assembled car that looks like a 25-year-old DeLorean, but performs and behaves as you would expect a car today to do. On the outside, these cars are exactly what we remember. The stainless steel body is all there, the DMC logo is exactly the same, the grill, the wheels, the one thing that everyone immediately recognizes, the classic gold-wing doors. But underneath the surface, a lot has changed. This is one of the new, new frames? This is one of the new stainless frames. It's a fantastic product. We've made some improvements to it over the originals. Our factory cars had separate frames for manuals and automatics. And the big difference is this plate right here. So we've made it uh, that it actually can be moved up and down for a manual more an automatic, so we only oh, have yeah. to stock one type of frame now. Right. This uh, is one of the fiberglass underbodies. Uh, this sits on top of the stainless steel chassis, and then all the interior components get installed, all of the stainless body panels, and all the glass gets attached. So, so this is missing a few pieces? Uh, one or two. So a new frame and a new underbody, that's good stuff. But these days, people want more than just a well-built car. They also want the goodies, and DMC's got it covered. The new cars can be ordered with a premium audio system, iPod integration, navigation, a backup camera, Bluetooth, heated seats. Wow, now we're talking. But no matter how modern the DeLorean gets, while you're in this huge warehouse, you can't help but feel a connection to history. And that's something James knows all too well. We're going into the secret DeLorean conference room. Check out some of the behind the scenes stuff. So you got you got tons of files of, of things that you said you've gone through before, but there's still boxes that you haven't gone through. Uh, there are some boxes that we haven't gone completely through. And as they consolidate parts and as they empty the stuff out, they'll find slides and photos and files and stuff. I spend a lot of time going through this stuff and because I like the history of it. And it's interesting to see the internal conversations between the company, which was a day-to-day -day job for them, and they were just doing their thing. Yeah. But to us now, it's a, a piece of it's a history. puzzle. Yeah. Look at this. There's one folder for each part on the car. I mean, there, there must be like a, a hundred of them. What is this? That's something kind of cool. Uh, Z was short for Zachary, and that was John's middle name, and that was his son's first name. Oh. Now, Tavio, that was John DeLorean's father's name, and that was John's son's middle name. Uh, so we believe, uh, based on some other documents that we found, that that was a idea for what they were going to call the DeLorean. It was going to. Oh, so this was an alternate name? An for alternate the name for the DeLorean, the, the Z Tavio. 
and for one reason or another, That's they haven't cool. used it. But we ran across that logo in one of the boxes, and it's just been here within the last couple of months that we kind of figured out what it, it meant. Doesn't, it doesn't have any note on it or anything? A lot of the stuff here. No names, no dates, no markings, just another piece of a puzzle waiting to be figured out. Wow, that's crazy. If the company hadn't have closed when it did, what do you think the future of the company would have been at that oh, time? I think if they had had another two more years, you would still see new DeLoreans being made today. They had a very impressive twin turbo that they had made some prototypes of. Uh, we're talking zero to 60 times, about five and a half, six seconds, which for 1984 was phenomenal oh, yeah. times. Uh, they had a four-door sedan that was on the drawing boards. They had one rolling mock-up made. Four-door sedan DeLorean. Two big gold wing doors. Yeah, <laughs> two big gold wing doors. And it was just, it was also designed uh, by Jujara, a very, very nice looking car for the day. Sure. So we've talked and we've learned a bunch of cool stuff. But we didn't come all the way to Texas to look at DeLoreans. We came to drive them. But I wasn't sure how to bring that up to James. Uh, I, I got kind of the ultimate question, though. Um, is it, I mean, I don't know if this is possible, but can I, do you no. think I could, OK. Um, you sure? Because, I mean, I'd really like to, you know, maybe take one of these cars out for just a short period of time and no uh, can uh, what if we took what if sorry what if we drove you know just a little wish i could but it's just what, no what, what what about you know i mean can't do it just small you know just just you know not that you? far can we go <laughs> no. a little ways e we, we could no i don't think no yeah okay yes, really fine okay. no are, are you serious let's go, let's go. Driving in a DeLorean. Not too bad. What's really cool feature in this car is this little this little head cup thing that's cut out of the out of the roof out of this gullwing door. Uh, John DeLorean was 6'2 and he was, he was pretty tall and his head would kind of fit right in that little pocket like this. And it's even padded in case you like bump around, you know? It's kind of cool. In many ways, the DeLorean brought me back to why cars were so cool in the 80s. Don't get me wrong, we weren't exactly tearing down the road. But looking back, this car existed where few cars dared to tread. A DeLorean was the everyman's car that only few possessed. But whether you had one or not, it was way cool. And that's what it's like to drive. Nostalgic, retro-built, not too fast, but more importantly, different. And it makes you feel that way. It was true then, and it's still true now. It's hip to be square. James, thanks so much, man. I had a great time. You know, I learned so much about the history of the car and uh, the struggles that uh, DeLorean has gone through. I just have a newfound respect for it now. Great. I, uh, I appreciate you coming. It's always nice to kind of share some of the story with people who have an interest in it, like yourself. It's been a fabulous time. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, see you soon. So I was totally wrong. I thought DeLoreans were gone and stored in some special place in my head. But they're actually here in Houston, Texas, alive and well. And if you got the cash, and you can handle the attention. You can pop back to 1982, get one of these babies for yourself. So, for MyRight.com, I'm Fireball Tim, and I'm out of here. I saw something over here. Um, what is this? Uh, one assy chubby. That's <laughs> assembly for the, the oh, cubby, cubby box. Cubby lid. box. That, a little storage compartment behind the seats. So there's no assy chubby in this car, right? <laughs> Not unless you're driving. <laughs> <laughs>